Hey, welcome in. Well, here's an example of a company coming to its senses. And, you know, I have to wonder if this will become a trend. If there's other companies out there that are thinking where the the leadership of the company is thinking, yeah, we should do that same thing. We've got all these wokesters in our company and they make everybody miserable. Work is hard enough. We don't need to deal with these gremlins throwing a wrench in everything. And mostly just doing it to get attention. But anyway, here's the headline. One third of base camp employees quit after founders ask them to focus on work, not wokeness at work. And it's so strange that that's a thing now, right? Where actually people have to be told to just focus on your work and not your politics while you're at work. It's very odd. It says, company excised wokeness from workplace after employees reportedly demanded internal reckoning. Internal reckoning. That doesn't sound like a lot of fun to deal with at work. Over list of funny names that they themselves had helped create. Their invocation of, oh, here we go again, genocide. Everything is genocide to these people. Uh, One exec said, so the exec said that their invocation of, yes, that's right, genocide uh, made rational discussion impossible. Is that really, I think that might be the point of using these these terms, these way over the top terms like that. And of course, it would make rational discussion impossible anyway. So it says about a third of employees at the software company Basecamp quit days after bosses told them to keep ideology out of the workplace and focus on the company's actual business. Seems very sensible. So I guess the the employees got a bunch of money to leave and now they can focus on Twitter, which is really nice. Quote, we make project management, team communication, and email software. CEO Jason Fried wrote on April 26th. We don't have to solve deep social problems. Well, there's a novel idea. A project management, team communication, and email software company doesn't have to solve deep social problems. Wow. Okay. I'm liking where this is going. Anyway, let's continue. Chime in publicly whenever the world requests our opinion on the major issues of the day or get behind one movement or another with time or treasure. These are all important topics but they're not our topics at work because they do project management, team communication, and email software, not social justice software. I have to wonder how many of these one-third of employees quit just because they wanted to get a payout and they just didn't want to work for a while. You know, there were some, right? I find it hard to believe that a whole third of the company could could be woke. Woke, woke to this level, right? Anyway, let's continue. Uh, Let's see. It says that uh, one third of the company's 60 employees took buyouts shortly after with one fuming quote, basically the company has said, well, your opinions don't really matter. Oh dear. Well, that's harsh. Unless it's directly related to business. A lot of people are going to have a tough time living with that. Why would you have a tough time living with that? Why would you have a hard time living with the idea that your company doesn't care about your politics? They shouldn't care about your politics. That's a good thing. All you have to do is not try and make them a part of your job. When nobody hired you to do that in the first place. So a lot of people are going to have a hard time living with that. With what? With not doing things that are not directly related to business, to what you're being paid for? This is an incredible amount of narcissism from these people. This sounds like a really unpleasant person too, right? This is not the kind of person that you want to work with, that you want to have to be stuck in an office with all day. Anyway, anyway, but let's see. It turns out that um, the woke tensions boiled over uh, in December after a new hire had volunteered to help the company work on diversity issues. Red flag. Red flag, you say no. Oh, no, 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 no. We don't need any help with that. And uh, by the way, you're up against the deadline. So, you know. (laughs) So the first mistake is accepting the uh, volunteering, right, on the diversity issues. Big mistake. So what did this this volunteering uh, include? It included criticizing the fact that for years, many employees had contributed to a list called the best names ever, in which they placed funny customer names of the sorts of names Bart Simpson used uh, when prank calling Mo the bartender, like Amanda Hug and Kiss (laughs) and Seymour Butts and uh, my crotch. (laughs) 
which are all classics, right? Nothing wrong with that. It's called levity. It's called levity. Life is hard. Work is hard. You need to be able to laugh sometimes. You need a bit of catharsis. That's all this is. But wokesters don't like that. So let's see what happens. So you have the person volunteered, and then a third of the company joined a diversity initiative behind the volunteer, and two employees who had contributed to the list of funny names asked why there had never been an internal reckoning over it. So what happened there? I wonder if like the volunteer approached them and then threatened to like get them fired over just some stupid list, and then they immediately bent the knee or something and agreed to fight the woke fight or something. I don't know. I wonder. Anyway, these two uh, apologized for their involvement and included a link to something called the uh, Pyramid of Hate from the Anti-Defamation League. I suppose we should take a look at that. So here's the Pyramid of Hate. Uh, the pyramid shows biased behaviors, growing in complexity from the bottom to the top. So let's see. At the bottom, you've got biased attitudes. This includes uh, microaggressions. What are microaggressions again? Let's see. Indirect, subtle, or unintentional discrimination against members of a marginalized group. Okay, so it can only be against a marginalized group too, because, you know, the punching down and the systems of oppression, I guess. I don't know. Anyway, what are they? They're indirect, so... So it's not a, a direct aggression, it's an indirect aggression, which might be up to some interpretation, right? And subtle. So again, this might be up to some interpretation here, right? So it's very subtle, or maybe it doesn't exist. I mean, that's kind of the thing with subtle, right? It's, it's not overt. Maybe there's something there. Maybe there's not. Who knows? I mean, it's right in the title here, micro Something tiny, something tiny that you can't even see. You need a microscope to see it, right? Anyway, so, and then we've got unintentional. So it, it didn't even mean it, right? It's really just up to the eye of the beholder, really, isn't it? It's just up to how somebody interprets your behavior. And by these standards, I mean, just anything can be, right? Anything can be the, a microaggression, microaggression. I find it so surreal They've got micro right in the title, right in the title. Something tiny, tiny. It's so small that even with a microscope, you can't see it unless you have the right ideology. You know, unless you're viewing it through the right lens, I guess. So anyway, you go from uh, microaggressions, which I don't know, maybe they're not real, right? And of course, that leads to genocide, of course, right? So basically anything that somebody just says, is uh, is bigoted or, or biased in some way, right? Just literally anything. Asking, you know, how you're doing could be viewed as a microaggression, right? That leads to genocide, always, right? So this is, this is how they do things. This is how they do it. This is how they shame people into following them. Anyway, there's your pyramid of hate. Um, link in the description. So anyway, the pyramid lists non-inclusive language, which I don't know what does that mean, and microaggressions at the bottom and genocide at the top. If people or institutions treat behaviors on the lower levels as being acceptable or normal, it results in the behaviors at the next level becoming more accepted. Which is very, very convenient, isn't it? Because you can just literally take anything and just say, oh, that's now it's genocide, right? Anyway, the base camp chief technology officer, he condemned the list of funny names, which he shouldn't have done because it's harmless, but found the invocation of genocide to be an example of catastrophizing that had the effect of shutting down rational conversation. And what is catastrophizing? Catastrophizing is when someone assumes that the worst will happen. Sounds a bit like the pyramid of hate. Often it involves believing that you're in a worse situation than you really are, or exaggerating, exaggerating the difficulties you face. For example, some, someone might worry that they'll fail an exam. Or alternatively, you might have to work through your lunch hour and you might ask a co-worker to pick up lunch for you and they might decide that you want to bring back slavery. That's catastrophizing. Anyway, when one employee continued to push this line of logic, Hansen pointed out that the employee himself had participated in discussions making fun of customers' names. Quote, you are the person you are complaining about. So that would have been pre-cult, like pre-conversion into the cult, right, I guess? 
Anyway, the companies had enough. They said there would be no more societal and political discussions on official company channels. Calling it a major distraction, it saps our energy and redirects our dialogue towards dark places. Of course it does, because there can never be an end to this. If you're looking for something desperately, you're always going to be able to find it, especially if you can reduce it to subatomic levels, right? It's like, oh no, there's still you know one part per quadrillion of bigotry in the coffee maker, right? You're never going to stop finding it, because you can just imagine it everywhere. And maybe that's the point. I don't know. But anyway, there was some uh, some comments about this uh, from people who really support these employees for quitting. Because I guess uh, Basecamp is, a I don't know, a fascist company now. Anyway, here's somebody from Twitter who wanted to comment on this, who supports the, uh, the employees, I guess, who didn't want to work for. I guess, is it fair to call Basecamp a fascist company now? I don't know. Anyway, this guy, John Breen whose bio describes him as he, him, ADHD. So why does everybody need to know this guy as ADHD? Is it because that's where people get their virtue from now? From having things wrong with them? Oh no, did I do a microaggression or something there <laughs> saying he's got something wrong with him? Well, if not, then why mention it in the first place? Why is it something that you need to deal with? But anyway, anyway, I'm going off here. Software developer, queer, high maintenance. So if somebody tells you they're high maintenance, you want to stay away from that person because they're unpleasant, <laughs> because they're not nice to be around. That means they're really touchy and oversensitive and just a hassle to be around. So avoid them. Just do yourself a favor. Anyway, what did he say? He said, let's keep track of the folks who are leaving base camp and do what we can to find them a new home where they're allowed to exist without being told they're divisive. Okay, but if you don't want to be told you're divisive, don't be divisive. That's the thing, right? If you're going to be divisive, and all of this woke stuff is fundamentally divisive, it's intended to be divisive. Okay, if you're going to intentionally be divisive, okay, expect people to say that you're divisive and to not like it and to not want to work with you. I mean, I just find this so weird. They just want to be left allowed to exist on somebody else's dime right, in a company while being divisive and wrecking the company and making life suck for everybody else for the other two thirds of the company, I guess. I mean, just the narcissism of these people is astounding. Allowed to exist without being told they're divisive. Oh, just, I, I, okay, just don't, don't hire this guy, <laughs> right? Don't hire this guy, whoever you are. I don't know, it's just, it's shocking levels of narcissism. Anyway, but let's end it off with this. Here's another, here's another one. Quote, ex-base campers. We need people like you at Mozilla. One Mozilla employee responded. All I have to say is, Mozilla, you've been warned. <laughs> you've been warned. Anyway, that's all I got to say about that. Please subscribe, like, and share. That really helps me out. If you'd just like to listen, there's the podcast, Radio Baloney. It's on pretty much every platform. If you look for it, you will find it. Thank you very much. I'll see you next time.